uh, good morning and uh, now uh, we would be moving into another sphere of uh, the sphere where from this uh, natural disasters they occur so till now we have been asking uh, talking about what are all the different kinds of disasters which are happening on the ground on the ground or of the individual planets there may be some other similar activities elsewhere also now we have we, there are other disasters which happens and gets or that its origin is from the atmosphere so now uh, there is a heavy rain so it is one among the disasters sometimes it causes floods and things like that it originates from the troposphere so these are all some of the uh, uh, disasters or either you call it as an atmosphere or you call it as a meteorological or weather related disasters so now what are the disasters which you have classified in the under the category man made and natural disasters they are blizzards they are cyclonic storms drought thunderstorm hail storm these are all the things which were in the ground personnel they, like uh, if you are talking about the aircraft and uh, things we ground personnel they don't have a control over there and maybe whatever i do it may have some effect on the uh, on this atmosphere but uh, like people are talking about the climate changes or due to whatever we do it on the surface of the earth okay now let us uh, consider these disasters which are all uh, important to us on a day to day life and uh, let us see Be before getting into that we need to understand what is the atmosphere where our planets we were just talking about that so sun and its planets there is a need for us to understand where the solar in the solar system where the earth stands for what is the difference between the earth system and the rest of the system why are we afraid of it okay now when you look at it uh, the solar system there are planets which are having a terrestrial planets that means they have got a uh, uh, rock mass and above that you have got the gaseous mass and there are only the planets which has got only the gaseous planets these are all called the gaseous planets and there are other celestial bodies which moves here and there okay and when you look at the uh, these planets some of them have got different kinds of gaseous atmosphere this gaseous atmosphere they vary in percentage suppose if you take a 100 cubic volume of uh, uh, air mass and how much is the air mass occupied by the oxygen how much is by the, uh, the nitrogen how much is by the other gases so this is to show and when you have see when you look at it venus and mars they have the similar co2 concentration is more and the why co see unless we are able to take co2 into our breathing system we will not be able to do that so there is a like a, uh, we all know that petrol driven vehicles and now we have got a diesel and now we have got a natural gas systems so unless uh, we adapt ourselves to the co2 uh, inhalation and living conditions rest of them is not going to be possible so in the terrestrial system we have venus and we have mars which has con contains most of them whereas when it comes down to the uh, earth we have nitrogen maximum and we do have oxygen over here whereas in the other two planets whatever we talked about they, there is no oxygen over there whereas when you go to the mercury you have the oxygen there but the rest of the co2 is less when you look at the other planets when you do that you have the gaseous planet you have the hydrogen which is the normal it is the maximum is the hydrogen in those molecules and similarly in the other bodies we have the nitrogen in a bigger way so a uh, yeah, life like us in other planets that depends upon the gaseous material which is available in their atmosphere for their breathing as well as for the survival okay now this is to show you about how the earth is different than the others okay now whatever we are talking about whatever the disaster whatever we are talking about it is based on what is available on the surfaces now second thing is these are all the planets so we, what we say is and we say the whatever happening on the ground the climate change for its example we say climate change is coming up okay some people say that it has come up okay in the climate change also there are two things which we have to remember is 
one thing is whatever we you do that is whatever we do it on the earth surface is one aspect and, and the another aspect is the uh, external factors the external factor here is the sun's energy okay the sun's energy is the energy which is giving us uh, warmness which being a uh, cozy things and uh, food production and everything is possible now if in the sun also you look at the birth of the sun so it is zero and when you come down it is it is a billions of years now we are somewhere around 4.5 billion years now and the sun was white in color now it will go to the red red planet then it go to the nebula then there will be a dwarfing and things like that okay for these things how the sun and its own system followed then we have to understand what are the how the planets were formed that's a different kind of thing suppose you assume uh, from the day one the sun's energy is decreasing decreasing it will start decreasing it in another five as you move down this year, years there is going to be a decrease in sun's energy okay our sun's energy will be more or it will be less when the sun's energy is more we are likely to face the lot of heat if the sun's energy is likely to come down then we are going to be the coldest thing okay so this is what we have to understand is we are somewhere in the middle 4.5 if the entire sun solar system is going to collapse then you, you have enough billions of years before you the sun's solar system is going to collapse okay we don't have to bother that solar system is going to collapse now now whatever is happening on the suns in its surroundings radiation energy so that is what is being made as this okay in addition to whatever we burn whatever we reflect from the earth surface that is the thing these are all the things which are the causes for climate change climate change it climate change is nothing but it is that the entire seasons are going to be changed or there will be a variation or there will be a crunching of uh, um, crunching of number of days in the rainfall or expansion of the number of days where we are going to get the summer heat okay so that is what the thing is now when you want to do that why do we why why are we interested now what we saw in this is this is the slice of the earth and this is the as you move these are all mountains these are all crust you have mantle outer and inner core and when we are talking about okay, volcano we said the volcano this this the uh, solidus liquidus solidus magma comes out and comes through that so what we saw till now is earthquake and volcano landslides and so snow everything is about the earth surface only so now we will be going back what is there above the earth surface so when you want to see what are all the uh, above the earth surface it is a gaseous mass or it is we call it as a air mass air mass is a complete it's a composition it is a combination or it is a uh, availability of all other gases as well as particulate matter when you look at it so this is another section of this is you have this is the earth surface and above that is about 14 kilometers above the earth surface we call it as a troposphere okay and above that that at the outer is going to be around 800 and plus we have the ionosphere so that is what is being exposed to the sun and solar systems other with other planets that is what is it is outer outer section of the earth surface that's under atmosphere okay now what we are we interested so this top ionosphere what is happening is whatever happens on the sun and its uh, particles and the sun its and its uh, entire galaxy so they are going to get affected by this the the ionosphere is going to get affected okay whatever is happening on the earth surface like a heating like a reflection okay whatever you do it like a human induced activities like burning burning of this gas burning of this oil and things like that so those are all the things they are going to be there only in this troposphere okay and the rest of it when do you say about the ozone layer see ozone layer is nothing but it is a oxygen in three valency that is o3 and which acts it is a it is a what you call it is a thin layer of gaseous envelope it is it is a thin slice so which is available on the surface sphere so you say that because whatever we burn and it is going to create a, a 
ozone holes and things like that. That is basically we say that it is because of the what we do it on the ground surface. Okay, this is what we know, right? Now, for a disaster, for a disaster, and we were just I have asked for the what is the atmospheric disaster and what is the space disaster. Atmospheric disasters are the disasters that get affected that happens in the troposphere immediately above the surface whereas the space disaster is the one which is happening in the ionosphere or there is a meteorites or there is asteroids or any other thing which is going to come from the external surfaces okay now we are going to we saw this land portions now we will be seeing what is going to happen in the troposphere and what it is what are the disasters which are related to atmosphere in this area Okay, if you are clear about this, we are going to talk from the land, we are going to move up a bit and in that in the troposphere and that is part and parcel of the atmosphere. Okay, so will there be a change? Will there be a change? Yes, definitely there will be a change as you have seen from the uh, seashore as you move up towards the hills, there is a coolness, the temperature drop is there. And we, you have that oxygen variation is the percentage of the oxygen availability in those areas are there. That is the variation which you will be able to see it as you move it, right. So if you go beyond that places the up to 11, 14 kilometers, what happens is and you are likely to have a different temperature, different pressure and everything, okay. We, that will not be uniform everywhere. There will be a variation, point wise variation at one point wherever it is getting generated it is high or low and the rest of the areas we have the lesser thing. So now the next group of disaster which we are going to talk about, we are talk about the disaster which gets generated in the troposphere, okay, clear, can we go because I thought I will just because there are people who talk about disasters which are related to only climate change, okay, what do you mean by climate change we should understand, what we do it one thing, how we are affecting the rest of it is another thing or how, how others they affect us that is another thing, okay. Now we are going back to the rest of it. See this whatever the disaster which we have seen till now, till now land based disaster because that is the inherent quality of that particular uh, land. But here what we try to, we are going to do it whatever is there above us that is the thing, okay. Now we will go back to what are the disasters which are going to be there. First main thing which we are, see we have the lightnings as we have seen lightnings it is the uh, atmosphere based and we are not able to uh, predict and we are not able to predict what happens and things like that. And one, one thing which we are all, all of us will uh, try to say is when there is a lightning and thunder shower try to be inside and you try, try to save yourself, okay. Now, when it is the storm and cyclones, these are all the high speed activities which happens in the atmosphere and because of the movement in the uh, troposphere and the surface object, they also tend to get affected. So what are all the things, one thing is a lightning and uh, lightning temperatures, they, people have estimated about 30,000 degrees centigrade. So when it comes as a pointed one, there is nothing we could able to do and the rotation where it is going to have, even though we see the lightning in the uh, atmosphere, we are not sure where it is going to strike. Even if it strikes, it is only a parts of the seconds, so we cannot do anything other than being inside or you try to have the lightning resistance, not lightning resistance, lightning it receives and it gives on to the earth surface, okay. So that is one thing. Second thing is the hail. Hail is nothing but you have the precipitation and uh, lumps of ice also comes along with that. It is a type of a precipitation which happens and this hail, hail storm, storms uh, means then there is a wind a portion is added into the system. That happens when there is a wind and uh, precipitation when they occur together in this area. Third thing is blizzards it is a snow like uh, system where the water is less and the snow related stuff is more in this activity. So these are all some special conditions where in some parts of the thing uh, it happens right. Um, hurricanes that is another thing which is there 
hurricanes and uh, normally they are all uh, happens in the Atlantic and the East specific uh, regions and they are called in a different modes. Uh, if it is happening, it is a circular wind movement below a, above a particular uh, air uh, wind uh, speed that is what is uh, this type of thing. They are called if it happens in the Atlantic Ocean or in the Pacific Oceans, they are all called hurricanes. And if the same phenomena, whether circular phenomena, if it happens in the uh, uh, in, in this area, sorry, in the Indian Ocean, then it is called as a cyclone. Whereas if it is happening in which is happening in the East Asia, Australia, and other places, they call it in a typhoons. Okay, so typhoons. Hurricanes and cyclones, these are the circular wind movements that a wind movements, okay. One thing if it they 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 start from the ocean surfaces, okay. And if the ocean surfaces is Atlantic or Pacific, then we call it as a hurricane. And if it happens in the western Pacific areas, then we have the typhoons, okay. Yeah, when it happens in the Indian Ocean, then we call it as a cyclone. Okay. Why these variations? We may have to go in detail because maybe the process, maybe the movement, maybe the things which we are, I'm, uh, which we have to go in detail. But the impacts or effects are going to be a circular wind, more than 100 kilometers per hour, and the followed by uh, rains or wind and rains that is can happen over there. We just go in time. Tornadoes, tornadoes are nothing but a circular wind movement. There, in the cyclones, it happens on the troposphere and then on the troposphere, okay. And there is not necessarily there is a connectivity between what is happening on the surface and the ground. Whereas tornadoes, one you might have seen. Twister, there is a twister, Andi in Hindi they call it up, Andi also uh, during the summer there will be a swirl wind and which rises from the top to the bottom, which you might have seen in some part of the uh, northern India, which is very common there. So if that same Andi, if it is able to make a bigger one, then that is what the tornadoes are. Tornadoes are there, uh, some of the places in the US, it is very common. Okay. So that is uh, we, we, that is another uh, wind to uh, the land to atmospheric activity and which which involves a uh, wind pattern. Okay. Now uh, we will come back to this. This is what the tornadoes are. See the cyclones. They that is in the uh, atmosphere. It starts. Okay. And they do not have a connectivity between the land and the cyclones. It is like a fan. This is the fan I am putting it in on, okay. And you get affected, okay. That is the cyclone. Whereas tornado is because of that, this type of V shaped structure which is gets developed, they get, they will try to land onto the thing. There is a connectivity between the land and the atmosphere. This is the tornadoes, right. Second thing is uh, uh, cyclones, hurricanes, two typhoons and all, they uh, starts from the ocean surfaces and comes to the land portion, okay. Whereas tornadoes, it happens on the land surface, okay. Now that is the major difference. That is the major difference. They get, see here because of the high temperature on the surface, they get connected, the cloud formation they happen and there is a connectivity. See, the, have you seen anything in your life in this Indian or wherever you are from? Something similar to that? No, we, 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 have, we do not have the, such a system. This system is not there normally, I, uh, I believe that they are not in the tropical countries tropical places wherever 0 to 30 degrees, okay. Maybe on the, uh, the Americans 30 to 60 or in the, I am not sure about that, okay. What we have got, we have got Andi, Andi that is what in Hindi they call it up and that will be from the ground 
there will be a small small swirlings and all the loose leaves they get lifted up from one portion to another portion that is what you see it because of the high temperature during the summer seasons you will be able to see in some dry condition dry areas but that doesn't go up to the 14 kilometers or 10 kilometers of this nature so tornadoes and another thing is there will be a lightning there will be a v shaped circular pattern of wind they are the very uh, characteristic features of a tornado okay here what is the process here which is involved in here is see on this surface the temperature is very high okay and the cold air which is available in the atmosphere or in this type of cloud patterns they get sucked when there is a hot water hot air when there is a cold air there is a pulling of the cold air and replacing the hot air so that because of the rotation so they get twisted up okay so that is the difference in between a tornado and a cyclone cyclone it is the other way around from the top it comes from here it is top to from the bottom to the top and there is there there needs to be a connectivity well when you look at it and this cloud patterns are being sucked towards the ground uh, if you have not seen it you see a movie called a twister they are called as a twister in some places the spirit is such a way and it uh, what it does it the any object circular uh, square or any other normal shape it, it twist it then it plucks it up and it gets carried away and then thrown somewhere else okay this is a common phenomenon in us in some parts of the us we are not going into details but i, I suggest you just watch this movie twister okay there are people who does lot of research on that they would like to know and individual ball like thing material they in that movie that it is the researchers they try to go through that uh, follow the twister and they go up to the tip up to the center point of this tip and they position themselves they have an experimental and they have how these individual particles get affected by this twisting okay the ball it will be like more like a ball bearing in the uh, system so they were trying to do that but only thing is you have to go and position yourself just in the center of this twister side it doesn't make difference in the center portion how much pressure it comes because why they study is uh, like a earthquake resistant it is because of the shaking and wherever there are cyclones and twister of this kind of category your um, design should be in such a way that building is not going to be uh, uh, building is not going to be twisted or just moved by here and there this type of systems okay you, i suggest you just watch that movie or you put twister in youtube you will come to know how the twisters they affect the thing because many of the times uh, the, uh, the houses the made up of wooden and uh, other things they get crumbled up and uh, once a twister passes through that way entire settlement goes up okay and it the, the basically the twister is hot air moves up cold air comes in from the atmosphere okay why the rotation the next question is why the rotation the rotation it happens because of the earth also rotates at the same time may not be significant but it is significant for that uh, amount of energy which they were all transferring from one to another now this is twister and uh, there are i think i have another one which normally wherever you are somewhere closer to the desert conditions desert conditions all middle east you can talk about it another or uh, rajasthan jodhpur jaisalmer bikaner and other areas they that is stand storm or a dust storm so what it does it because of the pressure variation from one place to another place 
there is a wind movement and the wind movement is faster enough whatever the loose material either sand sand type of material or silt or clay type of material or uh, dust whatever is there it is able to lift it up and then transport from one place to another place okay here the question you would ask me is suppose if this is the area where we have the desert area okay and this is the city okay assume a city why it should come towards the city any answer why it should come from the desert which is very hot to towards the city which is buildings and other thing why only this direction way of yeah uh, that, that is it because what happen is in the uh, desert because of the conditions so uh, totally 100 percentage it is reflective and 100 percentage it is more the temperature than the cities so the, in the cities what happen is even though buildings are also go, it's going to create, generate heat okay it will not be it will not be not to that extent of the desert there it is uniform here it is heterogeneous some places it is high some places it is less there is another one uh, which normally we are worried about in the climate group is urban heat islands so when you travel when you tra travel along 100 kilometers what happen is you have all the uh, paddy fields and suddenly you have forest suddenly you will have the settlements settlements what we try to do is we have uh, heat reflectance like we have concrete and you have tiles you have asbestos which reflects more energy which is falling on the tile whereas when it is in a uh, uh, forest area when there is a greener area it absorbs some energy so the reflection is less okay so there will be uh, that is what we, in the uh, climate change studies people talk about urban heat islands because whatever the material we use it and they are the ones which they don't keep any energy they try to reflect back like the buildings which are come up just before iit where you have the mirror uh, uh, glass on the other side when you go closer to that it will be it will be like a going closer to a, a ac bus exhaust because entire thing is reflected from there whereas you see the next building they are concrete buildings or they have got a different roofs and because of the different group uh, roof type and they have a tendency at least maybe 5 to 10 percentage absorption is possible not immediately so that is the same phenomena where the sandstorms they come from the desert area towards this okay there could be some uh, on this side and uh, after this there could be some water bodies like uh, there could be uh, maybe a ocean okay so here it is hottest here it is coolest so there is a transition that is also another way of thinking about it okay it's very common it uh, does it happen only in the daytime any time it can happen normally it happens in the afternoons because that time up to 12 o'clock or up to 1 o'clock there is a lot of heat energy which has been fallen on the earth surface so you get heated up and then starts moving out okay now this is another disaster so what do we do in this see here what uh, uh, the, the intensity of this does maybe initially it may be less and over the time period what happen is the amount of dust which is coming up is going to be on a higher side so we have enough time okay to save ourselves what do we do we have time and it is only a seasonal phenomena it doesn't happen every time it happens only during the summer just before during summer or just before on the periphery of the summer periods so you can save your lungs by covering it up okay and the rest of it if there is going to be a sandy particles which is going to come into your exhaust or whatever rubbing against your face or something like that you can only cover it up okay so this once this type of storms when it comes down it will be more like a rain rain what happen you get choked up in snowfall what happen the snow is dumped on you 
right. Here now the sand is dumped on you. So, you have to clean it up. Okay. At times what happens is so the, these buildings the, uh, there will be a huge sand which is going to get deposited in that area. So, clearance is a big problem. Okay. So, this is another this hazard which it is only a localized phenomena. It is not everywhere, it is somewhere which are closer to the de desert conditions. Now, we will go to a tropical cyclone. See, we, we all of us know the gentle breeze. So, how uh, we know what is what is a wind? Wind is movement of air from one place to another place, one location to another location with the speed of 10 kilometers per hour or 20 kilometers per hour. That is what we, we, we have understood with each other. Uh, 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 can we, how do we know that there is a wind? Because of the leaves and trees that is movements you will be able to do it. Otherwise you have to have that anemometer and then find out whether how much is the speed. So, this phenomena what it does it, there is always a movement of wind or a air from one place to another place. So, why one place to another place? Either you see water moves from the top to the bottom, okay. rocks they start rolling from the top to the bottom, okay. whereas what is the difference? The wind movement is because of in this area location wise, in this area the wind is heated up because the temperature in and around that area is high. Whereas, in the next area, next region side by side, so the temperature of the wind is very less. So, what it does it, the coke, the coke, which one can run faster, move faster, where that means the hot air will be able to come to the nearest one or the cold air goes towards that side. Okay. So, this is why where this type of, as you move up, as you move up in the atmosphere, the, there are two factors which controls it. One is the temperature and the another is the pressure. Okay. If the pressure is high from the low pressure areas, the, the high pressure goes to the low pressure area or low pressure areas, wind moves towards the high pressure area so that there is a mo moderation takes place. Similarly, if there is going to be a high temperature where because the air is heated up, it is like burner when you are doing that, when you are heating it up, the air around that particular burner, it gets heated up. There are two possibilities, what is that is, because it is lighter, what is, why it is heavier or lighter is the humidity, that is the water content in the air mass is high in that area. So, when it is removed because of heating, so it starts moving it up lighter. And when it starts moving it up, what happens? This place is vacuum, right. So, the cold air in and around, cold air means not necessarily that much cold, relatively 1 degree temperature, they try to come and occupy the vacuum. It has moved up, vacuum or nothing is there. So, air from the surrounding areas, they come into the sets. It is because of the heating, that is why it, it is said in the uh, climate change, which people talk about it, do not burn, do not burn anything. When you are burning it, what happened is the air is heated up and it moves up and your humidity in the air is reduced. There is a probability for a wind movement from the sides are possible. Okay. This is the one which you have. The second thing is if the pressure is more or pressure is less, low pressure areas, that pressure from the low pressure areas developed due to some reason or the localized phenomena. And the high pressure areas, this air moves towards that low pressure area. Okay. This type of uh, gradient in temperature, gradient in temperature or difference in temperature in, in terms of temperature or pressure that leads to movement of air from one place to another place. Second thing you would ask me is why in the coastal areas there is a difference? Coastal areas. One thing is water on the coastal side, seaside it is a water where the humidity that water content is more, whereas on the land portion, the land that air has got 
no minimum water content or moderate water content okay so that is why there is a wind there is a when you when you live in a coastal areas and after the in the evenings you get a breeze from the sea because land is heated up whereas the still the coastal areas it is wet warm or uh, it is humidity is more so that is why the tree the the uh, heat energy transferred from one to another but if you go after 12 o'clock in the midnight what happens is there will be a change that uh, area gets that land gets cooled up so uh, the uh, water in the ocean that gets heated up so there is a reverse direction of wind this is what the normal thing that happens if there is going to be extreme variation there will be a more thing okay so this is what the wind means okay what is a cyclone cyclone is nothing but a circular wind movement circular wind movement that happens because in the gets developed in the above the ocean areas because of the localized variations in the sea surface okay now that is what we and it happens tropical cyclone because as you are aware between 0 degree in the latitude that is a equator to 30 degrees on either south or in the north what happen is there is a sun movement is there from one side to another place that is why the seasons they take place so the central area gets the maximum energy sun's energy most of the times okay so that's the reason where this is called a tropical cyclones right now as i have see we have seen in the previous thing is second thing is there is a word here clockwise and anti clockwise okay uh, do we use this term frequently in our day to day life not much or do we use it clockwise and anti clockwise where do you use it if at all the what it does means is the clock moves from uh, uh, from your side i will come they will be moving from here to there that is the clockwise anti clockwise means this is the reverse directions right that we are aware about that and uh, it says on the northern hemisphere <coughs> northern hemisphere means where Asia, where we are india and uh, us china and things like that north of the equator the the tropical cyclones will be the movement will be clockwise movement okay is anti clockwise movement whereas in the southern areas it will be clockwise movement okay this is related to the <coughs> rotation of the earth surface because earth is rotating it in this area that is what we call it as a coriolis force when you are when you are ball when you try to ball bowl it like this so what happen is along that particular direction center of the ball whatever the air it strikes over there it gets deflected it when it go when i go there one this way and another way. this is what the air is being pierced through in both the directions okay now you say here it is like this okay so that is the same phenomena which is causes this clockwise and anti clockwise moments now another one which is there is we were just talking about is it is called hurricanes in atlantics and typhoons in pacifics and uh, like in vacuos in philippines cor cardona sos in mexico tainos in haiti and in, in the indian area we call it as a cyclone it is a tropical cyclone okay it is a cyclones are nothing but is a circular movement of the wind and maybe the maximum you may heard about the super cyclone of orissa sometime back where that uh, speed was more than 100 km more than 150 kilometers and above depending upon the wind speed which you feel it at when it strikes the area that is what we call it as a 
Okay. Now we will go back. Cyclones, super cyclones, and uh, see that which are more than one one nine knots. Knots are nothing but it's a nautical miles, and one nautical mile is equivalent to one point six, nearly one point six kilometers. You have to convert it to that extent, so it will be more than one hundred and seventy and above. So that is happening in the. That is what is called a super cyclone in the North Indian Ocean. And uh, what are the things which we you have to know is let us go to that side. So when you look at the cyclones, cyclones, the difference between the cyclones and tornadoes are see all the cyclones they develop in this ocean, either Bay of Bengal or further down Indian Oceans, and they move towards the land portion. Land portion is India, India or Pakistan. Or Bangladesh of that kind of category, whereas tornadoes it happens well within the landmass. Okay, and whatever you see here, this is the cyclone, cyclonic formation. Okay, what you, wherever you go, whichever cyclones it is, and you will be able to see the center. That is what I, I of the cyclone. So that is what everything starts. Spinning around. Okay, when you spin around, where do you think the speed will be more? Whether it is the center on on the periphery. When you are spinning spinning anything, whatever you do, like a, you take a, a small pebble, tie it out, and then start doing it. Where will be the speed? Where where it will be more? In the center or at the end? In the end. That is what. Whenever you when there is a cyclone. Uh, before the cyclone enters, you will have the highest wind speed. Wind will be so heavy, and followed by whatever it comes out. That is the reason. That is how cyclones are being measured. One thing is center. Okay, that is the center of the cyclone. Second thing is these are all the peripheral areas, right? And they, see now, what is the? How do you measure the cyclones? So. The diameter, whatever you see it here, that is the size. More the size, it will be more, and the periphery you will be getting more of winds. And this, and followed by that is the heavy rainfall in that area. The clouds which happens. Okay. Now, this is the satellite picture. Which shows, see what do you see here is these are all the land boundaries, land boundaries. So now the they see this is the land and this is the center of the eye of the cyclone, right? The eye of the cyclone is here. Still, it is expected to the, this eye has to cross this particular land portion. Why? Then the next question is why the cyclones come towards the land? Why not it gets lost in the sea itself? The reason is, it is the temperature variation. The land is little warmer when compared to the cold uh, ocean surfaces. So there is a trend towards moving towards this side. That is what the uh, track of the cyclone. The cyclone was here and it has moved up and it has to either move on to this towards the west or north. That is where we are interested. It is the landing of the cyclone. Landing means. This eye of the cyclone, where it touches the which part of the land it touches, that is what the landing means. Okay. Another thing also you might have heard before the cyclone, there is a calmness. Okay. So that is the reason is as the eye of the cyclone approaches towards the land. So that means all the pressures are there on the periphery. The central portion is without any variations. Okay, that is why, as it lands, the before the cyclone, there will be a lot of fury, lot of active, lot of wind speed, and a lot of uh, what do you call, lot of precipitation that takes place as the eye of the cyclone touches this particular land portion, landfall. That is what they call it as a landfall. That means eye is touching that particular land section, right? So that happens as the landfall happens, then there will be the wind speed will die down and there may be rain but without not much of wind over there right 
Now what happens in the cross section is, so this is how, the, this is the eye of the, the, this eye is, this is the eye. What happened is, if because of the, uh, uh, this surface of the ocean, when there is a hot air, evaporation is more. When the evaporation is more, what happens is the water is heated up and becomes light and it starts moving up. When the what when the air moves up, when the air moves up like this, so there will be a cold air which is there on the atmosphere or on the troposphere, they start coming down. Okay. Uh, there is a air movement on sides and there is a cold air coming in when the hot air, cold air, hot air, cold air, this type of movement what happens is there will be a formation of cloud formation happens in and around this area. These are all the cloud formation which happens because of this movement. This is like a piston, no? the piston is nothing but push it in, push it out, push it in and push it out. That is the reason and the cold air comes in, hot air moves up, cold air comes in. This is how the depressions this is how the cyclonic uh, cyclonic patterns they develop in a region okay so now because of the formation of the clouds on either side rain bands that is what you are able to because of the hot air and cold air movements and there are cloud patterns which happens in and around so this circular pattern you could be able to superimpose this is on a sliced basis this is on a profile basis, okay. But this type of movements, piston movement, how fast it coming up, that is what the, that is what determines the cyclone intensity, okay. Are you clear about this? Because this is what the cyclones are. It happens on the, develops, gets developed on the water body, that is oceans. In our side, it is the Indian Ocean. Okay, Indian Ocean. Why Indian Ocean? Why not Bay of Bengal? Because Bay of Bengal, you have the uh, on either side, you have the land portion. One side is India, one another side is Burma, then Thailand, and that type of thing. So it needs large water bodies to develop some differences in water surface temperatures. That is why it happens over there. Okay, now we'll go there. So the this is. What exactly another picture is, this is the eye of the cyclone, but in the, in the eye of the cyclone only the cold water, cold air comes in, when the cold in comes in and because of this all the auto airs they come up and they go, they get pushed up, pushed up physically to the top. So this is what it becomes a rain band. It is not only in the eye, it is there on either side. So this type of cold air hot air, cold air, hot air, that is the cyclonic effect, okay. Now this is a drawing of that, whereas when you look at the, what do you call, uh, uh, satellite pictures, this is the center, okay, this is the cold, hot, the hot air, cold air, the same thing you would be able to say it over here. Now the question is what is the temperature height at which it happens, maybe 10 kilometers, maybe 12 kilometers depending upon the conditions, okay. I think uh, I have made it clear about it and uh, one thing is what you, whatever you see, you, even if you see now uh, cloud pictures, uh, meteorological satellite pictures which is shown on the TV or on the papers or whatever it is, you will be, if you see a pattern, circular patterns. That means there is some sort of a localized weather condition is developing. If it is develops on the sea surface, then it could be a potential cyclone. If it happens on the land portion, then either there is a localized weather uh, changes are possible. Okay, so why we are interested in the, as a disaster? See, one thing is anything is going to follow. Second thing is how to identify, take care of ourselves. See, our planning is these things. Uh, it takes about a seven days time to get developed on the ocean. Then it has to get drifted towards the land portion and comes to your place. Okay, and 
if you see a picture on this side, okay, then you have a time, 7 days time to modify, alter your programs, major events which you are planning. Okay, now, what are these things? So, these are all the traveling of the cyclones. They get, they started here, they started here and they were moving and sometimes they come here or sometimes they move on to this side. So, uh, you see, the, if you look at this cyclones which has formed here, it forms and it moves and it gets dies down. There are cyclones which travels across the land portion, comes on to these sides. Okay. This is what we call it as a path of the cyclone. So, when you might have heard some warnings and there is a cyclone formation and 500 meter kilometers away from the uh, either Vaisak or whatever it is. So, you are, you hear it and uh, this is as uh, it is weak from the weekend it has strengthened out and it may come to it is moving towards north uh, towards the western side. Okay, western side or north western side or whatever conditions which you, they try to say. That is what this is the position and it is it has got a movement here. Every one hour, three hours we can have pictures or we can have every one hour combining all the satellite data. So, every one hour what they try to monitor is they try to put, they try to pin down the eye of the cyclone. That is the one thing which you can think about it. It is like a um, coordinate or a GPS coordinate. You find out the GPS coordinate every one hour how much it moved up horizontally and how much it fast it has come down. That is the speed at which it moves and this is the direction and it, it moves. Okay. So, this, this picture shows about the track of a particular cyclones or cyclones which has happened in the uh, past. So, from one to another. Right. Another thing is there is a cyclone here normally it is supposed to come towards the west okay? because west is the place where there is a land portion where there is a temperature gradient is there it is likely to come in. But what has happened is the cyclone has just drifted towards the uh, north and gone to the uh, uh, what is left out is the Bangladesh is the uh, inverted U shaped uh, land mass. So, there it gets and hits over there. So, this type of changes, change in the direction, uh, which is significant change in the directions, that uh, why it is happening is, it is a local phenomena which is happening in and around this area, not only over place and it is a region, it is not a single particular place. Okay. Now, what type of uh, warnings they pay people or a forecast which they try to give is, the position of this and the movement that the speed with which is likely to hit, okay, the travel speed. So, based on that, so we I add up the factor safety and if it is a 100 or 100, and 100 kilometers wind speed is expected, right, and any cyclonic formation it has got a wind plus precipitation, rainfall. I try to predict in those regions. Suppose if the cyclone is somewhere here. so the diameter of the cyclone is forming in these regions. So, I try to include this is the region where this type of wind is possible, wind and rain is possible and adjoin, adjoining areas there is a wind of a higher, uh, higher than what it used to be now. Okay. This is what I can do it 3 days before 72 hours. So, from 72 hours when when it starts moving towards the uh, land portion, I monitor it and give my comments. Right. So, this is how the process is. So, now you look at uh, so another thing, uh, tropical cycle. See, well, another thing is uh, tropical cycle filing. See, this is the name, name of the cyclones. Previously, they we call it as a cyclone only. Nowadays, we uh, people start calling it by different names. And uh, see, can two persons cannot be, see, we are also getting cyclonic thing and somebody on the Atlantic, Pacific, they will also be able to get some something similar to that. So, there it is a nomenclature, they, we have got entire uh, 
basins where cyclones happen that is a group of activities which we will come to here. So now when you look at it you just look at the cyclonic position it is just criss cross it is does not average it is towards the northwest. So when you are here then this is the width of the cyclone okay the diameter as it comes down and this is the area from here to here the cyclonic effects will be there. Okay. You look at the wind speed, wind speed is uh, 140, 45, then 100, then uh, as soon as it comes onto the landfall, what happen is and uh, it is like a when you have water bodies, cold air, what air it happens as and, as and when comes closer to the land portion, the cold effect will not be there, it will be warmer. Okay. So the piston works little weak or it gets there is not much energy to move around. So that is why these cyclones they lose their energy from 100 uh, knots towards 65 knots, 30 knots and get dissipated further down. Because it is not a, see when you are able to move around, when you are able to move around fine, when you are not able to move around it will not happen. So this is what the cyclonic thing. So now. I have said about what are process, where it happens, how does it move towards the land portion. So what is it that I am supposed to do? Wind, rainfall, okay. Wind and rainfall and any object which is going to be destabilized, it is going to fall off, say which will fall off, buildings will not fall off, okay. Building openings may get affected, windows, doors and things like that if it is. Then uh, trees it may come down and water when it gets watered up there could be some sort of a uh, water logging can happen and because it is moving along a particular direction along the water bodies. So there could be some uh, height, wave heights may change, wave heights may change. So these are all the indicators and these are all the impacts if the waves are high then the people in the coastal areas it may come up to certain areas it goes beyond the mean sea level okay mean tidal tidal levels maximum tidal levels along the coastal areas okay so this is the path of it that is what they try to do right this is another one another thing you just it it starts moving in a westerly direction then northwesterly direction westerly direction then again northwesterly then it changes its course as soon as it landed in this particular area. So they get drifted comes back to the coast and then again it moves up. So the change in the directions are possible okay. Now uh, what are the specific things which we are able to give is location specific if I am here. Okay. I can go on talking about from 3 days to 3 hours interval I will be able to do that. Coastal forecast means the forecast here, why do we give a for coastal forecast is for the fishermen who moves out or the any small ships which they move out. Regional forecast is for the agriculture people whether it is going to rain heavily or not heavily. Uh, ocean forecast it is the same thing, global forecast is what what would be the effect of this cyclone in the rest of the regions and any other value val here value added services includes when there is a, 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 a air, that is what is the aeronautical groups the aviation groups they need this thing suppose if you have to fly through this uh, area so there will be a turbulences and you have to keep a watch on that. Okay. If there is a port, small port or a bigger port, so there is going to be another trouble. The ships which are going to get whether it is going to hangar in the particular uh, port or if they have to do it, what type of things which they have to take care. Okay. We will see who are all the warnings which will get it out. Now, uh, this is nothing but the color coding is done but the warmness and in the cloud patterns. Some of them are warm, some of them red ones are warm that 
it starts from red one warm it will be colder and colder of this kind of category. This is also done. So, when you say that and you say here it is a cold band there is a probability of rainfall in those regions are very high when compared to these areas. So, that is how people try to analyze the patterns of the cyclones. Now, the next one is uh, uh, this is there is a uh, when you look at it cyclone as a basin see where which are the areas in the globe where you get more tropical cyclones. Now, look at from we start from here it get develops in this area ok. So, these two countries and sometimes it moves up in this portion also ok. This is they call it as a uh, one basin of cyclone which gets developed. The meteorological departments in India, in Bangladesh, then Burma and uh, th these guys they all come together and they share their own observational uh, say observation one is a satellite observation and another thing is a ground based observations and uh, on Sri Lanka. So, all these groups they have the one basin areas they share values and they try to give the name name of names for the cyclones ok. Similarly, there is another group here there is another group in the western in the Australian area ok and there is another group here in the Australian and New Zealand. There is one more group in this uh, in includes Tokyo, China and other areas. So, there is another group of things which happens in this way ok. So, these are all the 6 or 7 basins wherein the cyclones have been cyclones have developed and moved towards the land portions and the countries the sovereign countries which are there in and around they do the observations they share the information amongst themselves. Okay. Uh, share the information share the information is ground based observation. Suppose if there is going to be tsunami ok the same thing this group they talk about <coughs> sea levels they talk about the waves and they talk about the air space. So, this is how I will come back here. That was the major that was the pre the previous slide it is about the regional specialized meteorological centers which does it. So, now when you look at it which are the seasons for this type of cyclones ok. Now, you somewhere it is June to November, November to April then May to November the entire stuff and there is a variation between one basin to another basin depending upon the source where the geographical location where they are. Now, they normally call it up less greater than 34 greater than 63 greater than 95 knots. Knots are nothing but it is a 1.6 kilometers is 1 nautical mile ok. So, it is up to them to classify how do we do that they share the same type of information ok. Now, uh, so when do you get a what are the parameters for a cyclones? The temperature of water temperature in the ocean should be more than this up to 50 meters and there should be a rapid cooling with height as the temperature rises up that should be a current. The humidity should be very high ok. The reason is in the ocean areas only this humidity content is possible or large lakes yes. Then um, see normally it gets developed somewhere close to this 5 degree channel because that is the it is closer to the equator, but it is slightly far away from the equator that is possible. 
disturbed weather should be there. That means uh, you heard about um, lower atmosphere, middle atmosphere and the higher atmosphere and already there should be a, uh, see I cannot move my hand because without some the middle atmosphere fellows they start giving me. I cannot do it in the only from the middle, there should be somebody from the top also has to move it up. When they start moving it up, I also start moving it up, but at the same time local phenomena that will be able to move faster than what it is supposed to be. There. That is why there is needs to be some sort of a disturbed condition should be there in those areas. So landfall is the place at the location at which this uh, cyclone crosses that uh, cyclonic wind, the eye of the cyclone they crosses it, it comes on to them. Uh, then okay fine it is happening it is part and parcel of nature storm surges they are nothing but it is the high tides which comes in and where that inundation is more on the land and water because it is raining heavily and water comes from the seashore also because of the high tide that comes on to that and the draining because of these two effects all along the coastal areas small small water depressions water flooding is possible water will not be able to do what it does it it is a pollution whatever is contaminants are there taken from somewhere else and then gets deposited in this that is the major area in the cyclone also you you uh, now you will be able to see the differences high winds what what type of damages flooding what happens and flooding with storm surges what is going to happen this is the major uh, problem on the land and the structures and the agriculture and uh, on the trees okay now uh, and uh, this pressure variation you, you might when you are following a cyclone they call it as a depression this they say it is a depression comes huge okay so what is the pressure deficiency in these areas which is there that is given one and in the super cyclone it is 65.6 is the pressure wind speed it will go beyond 220 okay now uh, so you look at the uh, when there is a high wind what happen is uh, there is a uprooting of trees are possible and if it is a going to be some sort of a mud based houses there is a probability for this house collapse or the roof collapse or roofs get uplifted and then transported somewhere. There is a stagnation of water in and around and this house collapses a cause of it. When you look at this, this is the another viewpoint where there is a eye of the, uh, the cyclone and surrounding uh, cloud bands which, which creates precipitation. See this is one famous Hugo uh, activity which uh, affected this uh, American. So look at the extent at which it is having a, its damage potential. Sometimes these things they may cross over to this area and cross to the other side also. So this is you can call it as a tornado because there is a connectivity at the earth and the top or it could be like. So look at the tornado how does it affect the particular house. You look at the connectivity from the atmosphere to down. So now you look at it how it is able to uproot or dismantle whatever you have done it with the ground. It is like agar no? at the one single unit it is trying to move around because of the vibration and circular movement you are not able to get transfer. Look at the type of damage because of the tornadoes. It is like twisting your uh, cloth or twisting a paper bag and look at the uh, settlements how after the tornadoes 
how it has happened. Everything is flattened off. Now, you could ask me why these buildings are here. Maybe they are there because of they are made up of concrete and brick and mortar. But in this, many of the uh, American cities, they are there. Wood, wood is used uh, maximum. Uh, so these are all some of the forecast various techniques, synoptic, satellite data, statistics. Now everywhere we look at the statistics and uh, prediction models. They you have the probability model and things like that. And uh, see here, where where can we go wrong? See, you are seeing it in the satellite picture. Only thing is there will be a variation in the fallout, landfall, whether it is happening here or it is happened some 50 kilometers off, 100 kilometers off. That is the only thing which can happen. But otherwise, to some extent, they are all good. Um, what is the forecast strategy? That was the forecast strategy which you are able to say from three, 72 hours onwards. And when there is a circular feature, which see there, there is a season also in Indian conditions uh, in the India Bay of Bengal. So they happen between October to January or February. This is the season in which these depressions, low pressure areas developing into a cyclone and then they start moving it up. It is like a pimple when you see that okay, I am seeing something different. That means you concentrate on that particular portion of the surface, then it develops. Similarly, these depressions are marked by the satellites and then you go on monitoring it heavily. So forecast, then according to the ground based conditions, you give the strategy forecast. Warning, see the warning here is it is not a individual, it is, it is a larger area, maybe about a car. Uh, if the diameter is going to be 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers. So I can give, uh, this is the fall center high and here 100 kilometers, here 100 kilometers. My, there is a wide scope which I have to give, 200 to 300 kilometers I have to see that. And I have to give the warning, but the, this is the area. Uh, what type of warning I try to give is, it is a wind speed and I give warning about the type of the precipitation which is likely to happen. The responses, low lying areas, high lying areas, the probable damages, that is what which we normally people try to do that. How it is individual basis, it is an agriculture, agriculture it is up to a plant level, agriculture in the terms of tree related activity, agriculture in terms of flooding. If there is a flooding, all the plants will go off. If there is a high wind, the, uh, the taller plants will fall off. So this is the type of uh, uh, thing which you can think about from the agriculture. Uh, this is the warning time. This is the compatibility resistance to compare with all the uh, cyclone warning systems. Now, uh, what is needed is, it is a design messages. See, that is where I was trying to uh, emphasize on all the things is, unless you know what is, uh, wh what type of disasters are there which around you, then only you will understand what you mean by that. So I should, there are two types, one thing is no, they do not know anything, another thing is they know something and they will be able to help each other. That way, our messages should be clear whom I am trying to give. If I say that there is a cyclone with a speed of this, you should understand when you are you are driving a car about 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers, you are moving 200 kilometers, the wind is in the 100 to 120 kilometers. So there is a probability that you will not be able to control your speed and this air which moves perpendicular, they have a tendency to topple whatever is available, okay. That is how you have to interpret these messages and act accordingly, okay. So it is not that 100 kilometers wind stream, okay, let it be there 100 kilometers, what does it happen? So when you are driving it out, there is a gap between two wheels, 
below that this 100 kilometers winds moves through that and you are moving faster. So, there is a probability for a toppling is probable. Okay. So, this type of small small uh, uh, correlating one to another that is what is needed. If you are there in a roof uh, where there is lot of air gaps are there, there are you might have seen some design houses where there is a uh, air gaps are given for a wind circulation of that building. So, that is the place where the dangers they come in because the air enters through that particular air gap and it has got a lift of pressure is possible, lift of pressure is possible that lift of pressure may take away the roofs off. So, you have to have when you have combined it, you have to have a hooking facility or the interlocking facility so that the lift of pressure of 100 kilometers are reduced. That means, you have to just have it up in your um, wall and other activities. That is what I mean by design messages. Uh, so, if I have to give a nature, a severity, imminence and things like that, my message will be like a thesis. So, you do not, nobody has got a time to go through that. So, my messages should be sh short and should be communicated at the earliest time. And the location of the threatened area is, I can only tell about the area. I cannot tell about the particular geographical location, right. Uh, then uh, advice what to obtain, where to obtain, that uh, advice how and when, where to obtain further information is. Suppose what do we do if there is no electricity or if there is no water. So, in IIT what we try to do is and when there is no electricity, you uh, phone up our uh, power house. <laughs> when you do not have water, then our estate office. When there is a problem, then you uh, lift up our security. So, this is how for further information, there is a contact point in and around that area that should be known, that should be well equipped for further information, what you should do, what they should know. See, from here, I will be able to tell you about what is going to happen and this is the message and for further details, contact us. So, this is what is needed in every country and every country are for this. And uh, it is like any other disaster, you have the pre-cyclone watch, we do that. Cyclone alert based on the movement, we try to say this coast part of the coast is likely to be there and uh, then cyclone warnings as and when it, it is uh, 24 hours before the day. Uh, that means, uh, if the cyclonic speed is around 700 kilometers or something like that, it will come on in one, uh, one day's time or six hours time or whatever time period. So, that you keep it in mind and start giving cyclonic warning. Okay. The last one is like a, a reconstruction, rescue and reconstruction type of thing in other countries. It is like a post landfall outlook is nothing but the probable areas where water loggings are possible, probable land areas where this type of damages are possible and identify go and then do that. Okay. So, this is what the post landfall outlook and during the when the eye is when the eye is on the land portion landfall. So, that is the time do not move out of the house wherever you are close all the doors, windows and everything be in the house keep your rations and everything ready with you. When you cross it out you are not sure about one thing is when you are moving in a cycle or a scooter there is a cross wind effect is going to be there and free fall from elsewhere, if there is a uh, ashpata sheet or a thin sheet when it gets uprooted. So, it will fly like a saucer. Okay. So, that is also possible. So, to avoid this during the windy high windy portions during the time stay in calm. Okay. Look, listen to radio that is it. Uh, fishermen's uh, uh, type of thing is uh, it is like a boat 
the, when you are there on the water, what can happen because of the uh, assume 100 kilometers, the tides will be very high. Because of the tides, what will happen is your boat will not be able to be in a stable conditions, toppling procedures are possible. Second thing is your navigational facilities will not be that good. Instead of going towards the land portion, you may be moving in a different, gets drifted. You are not sure what is to be done. And the wind, whatever you have yawned and uh, it is going to create trouble. Stability problem of the boat and uh, navigational facilities, there will be a high rainfall in the sea also, which you, whatever the pumping facility you have got in the boat, you might have said some boats have got a hand pumps to drain out water, that may not be sufficient to do it, okay. So these are all the conditions, where for that purpose only the fishermen are given. But this is the trouble which is likely to be there in the offshore areas when you are going for a fishing, be careful about it. Sometimes we tell them do not go away because you may not be able to come back under these conditions, right. Um, another thing which they try to talk about is uh, the port, general port. The port is because there are two things, one is the port is nothing but it at the edge of the sea wind, tide and if they have got a larger ships which are anchored around. So if the anchoring facility is removed, if, if the anchors they come out, they have a tendency to come and then crash against those buildings. That is how many of the ships have got drifted into the uh, coastal areas. So that is given to them and uh, depending upon the facilities of the ship, you would have to make it up. Minor ports, it is flagged, they have different kinds of flag which they have to give. Um, what I would do is, uh, how uh, we will just see some of the uh, experiences and the other things in, a, uh, in the next class, okay. Thank you.